Hello, I am Quinny. Welcome to the channel, guys. In this video today, we're going to be talking about the news the world has been waiting for. Jota has signed for Celtic. It's confirmed it's done in a £6 million plus deal, including a 30% sell-on for Benfica. That's quite a sizable chunk on the back end. So I just want to welcome Jota to the club officially. Welcome, Jota. We are happy to have you here on a permanent basis, and I cannot wait to see the season we've got in store. But that then brings me, along with the Bernabe uh, signing that we had earlier this week for just under four million from Lanús in Argentina, that then brings me to how much money are Celtic going to actually spend in this window? You know, as we look at the rack up of the transfer bill since Ange Postacoglu has come in as manager, it's been one-way traffic really. So we're going to look into how much money's been spent, how much money we think might be knocking about in the war chest and what we're going to try and anticipate throughout the rest of the transfer window in terms of any business that might be incoming or outgoing. At any point in the video today, if you laugh, you learn, you like something or whatever, please do like and subscribe, share, retweet, all that good stuff, guys. Stay out of trouble and let's get stuck into it. If you could hit the subscribe button, I do daily global football content. Everything from wonder kids and rising star managers to fantasy football and watch alongs. I will also automatically enter you into my April giveaway. This month, I'm giving away a rare under 23 goalkeeper in the Turkish Superliga, Diego Souza, and two limited goalkeepers. If you want to stick around to the end of the video, we'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. One thing I've found really interesting about the transfer policy at Celtic over the last, you know, couple of windows in particular, is that there seems to be a little bit less hesitation in decision making, you know, like I can remember before when we've had different players on loans with options to buy or we've been linked heavily to people and it's maybe broke down on personal terms, is that the club can be quite hesitant to push the boat out when they know they want to, uh, to get somebody because it's the right person for the manager, for the system that's getting played for the upcoming season. We've been pretty decisive in getting these deals over the line, spending over six million on Carter Vickers, spending over six million on Jota and activating those loans. The last time we'd done that, of course, quite famously was with Edward when we activated a nine million pound option after having him. Over the early part of the last decade, the transfer policy has been very much in the green in terms of the net spend. We've definitely sold much better you know, we've sold much higher than what we've bought in. But for this kind of little period and trying to analyse where the club is at, I kind of wanted to start from after the Van Dyke transfer. Because once we sold Van Dyke for 14 million to Southampton, we also spent, like, you know, a lot of that money on two centre backs, three centre backs to try and replace them. Boyata, I think, had been on loan as well, and I think we activated that. But there was some change left over, and then we got a huge, like, kick on of a sell on clause with Van Dyke when Liverpool came and bought them. But I feel like starting from this window, and going onwards is probably the best way to have a little kind of cross section of where the club's at, the kind of lessons it's learned, and you know, the kind of bumps it's taken. Now, first of all, you think like the first season of Brendan Rodgers, oh, we must have spent lots of money and we spent tons of money on going and getting a totally new team to rebuild and all, all the rest of it. And the actual fact is, no, you know, um, <laughs> we only really brought in Sinclair, Gamboa played a little bit. Uh, Christopher Ayer, Moussa Dembele being a free transfer does skew that, of course, in some way. We did spend heavily on wages with these guys, but there were so many of the existing team that played under Brendan Rodgers from the previous eras of Neil Lennon and Ronnie Dyla, and Brendan Rodgers just kind of moved a lot of players up a level. Second season, a wee bit of a different story. We've spent £10 million and only lost £1 million on sales, and none of the players we've let go, well, maybe Easy Gary might have been on some decent wages because he'd been there for ages, but nobody else is a big wage uh, big wage player. In terms of the income and transfers, the biggest transfer we made was in Cham for four and a half million. And again, that was an, again after a loan. We paid a big loan fee for Charlie Masonda, which was an absolute waste of money. Marvin Comper for one million quid, been quite wasteful there as well. Same with Johnny Hayes at Aberdeen. I suppose we maybe got our money's worth out of him, but... And then it very quickly turns around. You know, once we sell Dembele... Armstrong especially, the net spend for Celtic goes right back into the positives. We're £14 million up on this transfer window, even though we've activated again odds on Edward after being a successful loan. And then we've picked up like Malumbu on a free transfer from Kilmarnock and taking some punts on guys like Schwed and Bayo and whoever else. And then again, the following season, net spend in the positive for £6 million. Selling Tierney to Arsenal and we've went and spent money on Julian, Kamala, Bolingoli. Sorrow for two million and Frimpong an absolute bargain at under half a mil. Even though we're seeing this number go up quite considerably in this window, sale, the, the, the sale of Tierney is absolutely massive and compounds a lot of the profit that was left over from the Van Dyke transfer like I spoke about earlier, as well as like the, the, the previous sale of Dembele and like we'll see in the following season where we've acquired 15 million in, so it's already washed the face 
of awful season that we won't talk about. And that's mainly because of the January sale of Frimpong uh, for just under 10 million. And also in the January, we sold Kamala for just under 4 million. So this that this whole series of mistakes here all kind of get paid for by those two purchases who we managed to break even on Kamala, basically, and a huge profit on Frimpong. Um, but in terms of wages, I know Barkas and Ajeti are said to be on big money, but Craig Gordon and Johnny Hayes were both on decent money. And in terms of slices of the pie of the you know, the wage budget at Celtic, I don't think it will be a huge difference um, from what those guys are on compared to what they've, what they were on. Maybe Clamalli throw him on top and Kuasi. You know, I don't think the wage spend has dramatically changed in the balance um, on this transfer window. And in Postacoglu's first season, it looks like we've spent tons. You know, we've spent uh, over twenty-three million on like Edigucci, Joe Hart, Rio Atati, Jack Amakis, Juranovic, all these guys. But the sales of Edward and uh, Christopher Iyer alone, even if you sprinkle on top of it, Christie and Bio and uh, Jack Hendry, gets us to over 33 million. So last season, again, we're net profit 10 million in the good. We then qualify for the Champions League, which gives us incredible financial certainty. And as we rock into this transfer window, like we spoke about, Jota for just under 7 mil, Carter Vickers for just over six. Um, huge deals that make up the, a huge part of the 18 million we've already spent. But a lot of the, I think a lot of that money in terms of the club's transfer budget would have probably been worked in to the finances on predication of qualifying for the Champions League. So I think those purchases there aren't even really affecting the actual transfer budget because if we didn't qualify for Champions League, we just wouldn't have got those guys, you know. So that's almost like a separate pot. And, you know, the signing of Dyson Maeda, that was kind that kinda of happened last year and it was one of these loans we guaranteed to buy. It's probably due to financial fair play kicking it into a different financial year of the transaction. So for this transfer window, we have only really brought in Alexandro Bernabe for just under 4 million. We're still continuously linked with really high prospect people from across Europe. Uh, recently, Malik Teal, I don't know how you say his name, sorry, as well as like Vinicius Souza, quite famously. And I'm hearing Celtic fans saying, we're not going to spend the money. I think we will spend the money. The, you know, over the last like little period here of the outgoings, uh, even though this is zero, losing Tom Rogic, who's on massive wages, Getting some of Barkaz's, um, the only reason I say Rogic and Beaton, they'll be on huge wages because they've been there for like nine years, annual increases and bonus schemes and all the rest of it that they'll be involved in. Um, so that'll be huge. And um, Barkas, whatever huge wage he's on, Utrecht are picking up some of that. So that has a good bit of wage relief. Also last year, now bearing in mind, guys like Furuhashi, Juranovic, maybe not Jack and Marcus, right? I think he'd have got a decent wage out of his... Um, Joe Harp to get a decent wage out of us, but some of these guys won't be on anywhere near as much as like uh, Edward was, Scott Brown, Olivier and Cham, Lee Griffiths. Like I think those four guys were on obscene amounts of money towards the end of their Celtic career, and I wouldn't be surprised if maybe on the wages were maybe even net positive as well over the last two or three years. And I think it's really wages is going to be what dictates the transfers that we're making. And I think some of the mistakes that maybe the clubs learned over the last three or four years is like. You know, picking up like Sviatchenko, Simunovic, and Boyata, all to replace Van Dyke is kind of pointless. You should just go and get the Carter Vickers and just get the real guy, pay him good money, pay the transfer fee, and get it over the line. Because the transfers we're now starting to regularly do aren't between one and three million. They're now regularly over four million. And it only takes another couple of transfers. We're already at a spend of 18 million. It only takes two or three more players to come in around that kind of price range and very quickly. Celtic are spending over £30 million in this transfer window and we've still not sold anyone. <laughs> you know, we've not got a Tierney, an Edward, an Ayer, any of these guys, Van Dijk, Wanyama, to sell into the Prem for double digits yet. Now, I do suspect Celtic will be open to selling one player for double digits this summer. It feels like we do it every year. I think there may, the, may be the change in strategy Celtic has because normally what the strategy is is wait till we qualify for the Champions League and then go and get the Jota and the Vickers when we know we've got the group stage money guaranteed. Because we have that now, perhaps the strategy would be we don't need to sell these guys in the summer or whatever. We can actually do all of that business in January and in the summer we just want to build the strongest team we can to have the best run at you know, the first half of the season as we possibly can. And when you look at even the spend, even though we're looking at a spend of like 30 million, pardon me, 23 million on last season, I think every one of these guys, Kyogo, Starfell, Abada, JJ and Gigi here, even O'Reilly, Rio, every one of those transfer fees that we paid, you can add 10 million to every one of those to start off with pretty much, you know, maybe not Jackie Marcus, maybe 
7 million or whatever, but pretty much everyone else, you could throw 10 million onto their valuation now. And what that does for the, you know, for the, the balance sheet at Celtic is it shows really profitable transfer activity. And when the squad value is now increased like massively, like the squad valuation in terms of balance sheets and the value of the club and all that, has probably never been as high in, mod- in, in the kind of modern age, if you like. So the club's in a great shape financially in terms of the, the transfer business that we've been doing. And I'm very bullish on the fact that I think we're going to push the boat out and get another two pieces, another three pieces, like top level guys. And then maybe we would accept a bid for Turnbull, Abada, or Juranovic, potentially. Because they're the only people I've heard links for. And they're the only people that would command any sort of reasonable transfer fee that I think the club would entertain. I don't think anyone else that we've brought in is anywhere close to being sold in terms of speculation or in terms of their progression, you know, being at the club, doing the development they require to make the next step on. The Champions League and the group stages is a big part of that, which again brings me back to my thinking of maybe the club is already, you know, strategically thinking we will sell in January once we've done the group stages and we see where we're at. I think we could have a net spend this window of like 30, 40 million, quite, quite conceivably. Depends on the transfers of the last two or three pieces we need, but like I said, the last part is... The main stumbling block, I don't think it's transfer fees for us in this window. The main stumbling block for us is packages, you know, the wage structure, the bonus structure that we can offer players. I think that is probably going to be the difference because Jota, Carter Vickers, all these other guys, even Segrist, these guys will be on, they'll be taking up more of that wage. You know, we're probably making a net gain on the wage budget and those guys will be eating that net gain up and it gives us less room for flexibility on some of these trades. Uh, <laughs> some of these signings and that's probably why when you hear Postacoglu saying stuff like it's about the right people they're trying to you know get it to fit with what they've got they're not trying to break out and it's always got to be about the right people when you're spending this type of money and I love that the manager has that point of view and it feels like the club more than any other manager that we've had in any of those transfer windows is prepared to back him and just say right if you're if you're set for him let's go get him and there's a real confidence even with Brendan Rodgers there was a real hesitation around spending big money for the players he was after and you know as thought as you guys don't need me to tell you we've kind of looked through the numbers under Neil Lennon and Ronnie Dyla and everyone else in between like the club has hasn't went out and net spended big ever and it feels like we're on for a window where we could have net spend 30. it feels like we're on for a window where we're going to have a net spend of 30 million plus let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and um, don't forget to like subscribe and share and retweet and all that good stuff stay out of trouble and i'll catch you on the next one take care bye bye Let's get into all the giveaway stuff before I let you go. I'm still doing monthly giveaways and I'm making it easier to enter. If you want to be entered to win this month's prize or any future giveaways here at the channel, all the same rules will always apply. Hit the subscribe button, you need to be a subscriber to enter, then leave a comment down below. Each month, a random comment from a random video will be selected as the winner, so the more videos you leave a comment on, the better the chance you've got of winning any of my giveaways. All the winners are announced at the end of videos the same way as we're doing here. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. As always guys, if you've enjoyed the video today, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. On screen there now is some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye bye.